So I have finally taken the plunge after lots of research and being on the fence for a while. I bought an FDM or filament printer. From my research I decided to buy a Flash Forge Adventure 5M. This is a Core XY FDM printer with a build volume of 220 by 220 by 220 millimeters. I ordered it through Amazon Canada using a $100 coupon which got the price even with what Flash Forge was selling it on their website. Since I have Prime, it arrived in two days. It was well packaged. The printer is not that heavy, so I was able to pull it out of the box myself. Part of my decision making was where was I going to put it? Ideally, I would have liked to have put it next to my resin printer in my garage, but I simply don't have the space. Instead, I decided to set it up in my office on the stand that used to be my daughter's kitchen tower to let her reach our kitchen counter when she was little. I screwed a piece of scrap plywood to the top. Like I said, the printer came well packaged. with the usual box of tools neatly arranged in a foam insert. I took out the spool holder and a bag of screws. Came with some grease, a small bag of tools, a nice pair of snippers, some build plate glue, and a shish kebab skewer. Let me know in the comments if I'm wrong about that. One of the cons of this printer, as well as many of the new FDM printers, is that the spool holder is located at the back of the printer. Not easily accessed, but I decided to install it anyways. Later I did print a side mounted spool holder which works much better. What I like is that this printer comes with a decently long power cord. Luckily I have an outlet close by, so I'll have quite a bit of extra length I don't need unless I move the printer one day to another location. So the printer uses a Bowden tube to feed filament into the extruder. The tube and cable providing power and data to the extruder are neatly clipped together with a few clips. One day I'll print out a drag chain cover to enclose them. As you can see, I put the Bowden tube into the extruder a bit prematurely before loading the filament. As usually, you load the filament through the Bowden tube and then insert the Bowden tube and filament into the extruder. Now to install the control panel that comes separate. This is another con as the panel connects with a very thin ribbon cable. I was careful not to damage it as I took off the tape securing it to the frame. Then I had to figure out how to plug it in into the back of the panel. There is a rotating clip you first have to rotate into the open position and then insert the cable and close the clip. This wasn't clear in the instructions but I did find some info online that showed how to do it. It was also a bit tricky getting the panel into the clips on the frame. I would have preferred some bolts or other easier way to attach it, but I finally got it installed. The final preparation step is to remove four bolts holding the build surface in place for transport. I used the hex key provided to remove the bolts. The ones in the back were a bit trickier to do. I kept the bolts in the small bag the spool holder bolts came in, in case I need them in the future if I ever need to move the printer a significant distance. Okay, time to start it up. It makes this annoying startup sound that is quite loud. There is a setting to turn this off, which I did later. I'm glad to see that English was the default, but you can of course change it. On first startup, it goes through a few calibration steps.
It first homes the printer, levels it, and does vibration calibration. It is noisy. The fans are the worst. I can see why having it enclosed is better, so I plan to print out the enclosure parts one day that Flash Forward provides. The leveling was quick and is completely automatic. No need to use paper to set the Z offset as on some printers. And vibration calibration is extremely noisy. Once that was done, I pulled out the sample 50 grams of filament Flash Forge provides. The color is burnt titanium PLA and it looks really cool. So I stuck that on the spool holder and fed it through the Bowden tube. Then picked the load function on the control panel and watched it spit out some orange filament that was likely used at the factory for testing. Then the sample filament got extruded. One other con of this printer is that it seems to extrude a lot of filament during filament loading and changes. I guess that's just to make sure all the old filament has been purged, but it extrudes way too much. The build plate, which is a PI sheet, is easy to remove and install. They put some brackets at the very back so that you can just push the PI sheet all the way into the clips. And there's a plastic handle at the front so you don't have to touch the hot sheet. Next step in setup is that it wants to print a test cube. Unfortunately, it never printed. Nor did the keychain tag or any of the preloaded models on the printer. When I researched online, I found out that the most recent firmware updates won't be able to print out the sample models unless they're re-sliced. So instead, I sliced this googly eyes bookmark that I had previously printed on my resin printer and sent it to print. Once it had the base layers down, it really started moving. I was surprised to see the head move that fast. I think it was between 200 and 300 millimeters per second. It even shook my tripod, which was close by.
Here's a close up of it finishing the top layers. One thing I didn't do as a newbie is tell it to do ironing on the top surfaces. So the tips of the knuckles especially were a bit rough. I did sand them down to get rid of the roughness. It was easy to remove it from the build plate And it turned out great, especially in this burnt titanium PLA. And there it is. I later added the googly eyes. So how am I going to use this printer for my skill modeling hobby? mainly to print out tool organization such as this multi-board setup at my workbench which I printed later once I had black and white filament. But I do plan to also use it for printing out larger buildings and facades for buildings for my model railroad and other diorama projects. Let me know in the comments below if you have an FDM printer and if you have any tips for getting the most out of your printer and what do you print on it. Thanks for watching.